We're now going to see, if we could go to the next uh, image, please, we're going to see three examples of the kind of almost worst case scenario, if you could explain, Nick, the sort of damage to the teeth that can happen. This um, is a series of, of photographs of a, one of our typical, for want of a better word, head and neckers, chronic um, smoker, drinker, poor general health, um, poor maintenance, who presented um, with the worn down dentition, as you can see there, those teeth uh, have been worn heavily. Down at the root level, there's brown discoloration, early root caries there, early decay. He uh, went on to have radiation treatment. He was put on our preventive protocols, but compliance was an issue. Uh, he was lost to follow up for a while. Um, he was from a geographically remote area and it was too difficult for him to come into his appointments. And so when we next saw him um, about 18 months later, if we go to the next photo, you'll see that all of the enamel, all of the white mineral part of his tooth is just completely debonded from the root surfaces underneath. It's just uh, completely worn away and he's got rapid, rampant decay on those teeth. So if you were to put a probe in those teeth, it would sink in a good millimetre and a half or so on all of those teeth. You can also see incidentally in the back there, there's crusting on his tongue. His mouth's very dry. You get dead skin cells accumulating there. They'd normally be washed away by the saliva. He hasn't got that working for him. So he's got this crusty, dry, swollen, um, atrophic tongue, which is a manifestation of the dry mouth. We saw him again. He'd lost a follow-up for a while, saw him again. This is two years and three months post-radiation. Is that the and next the, image? In the, final, in the final photograph, you can see that he's had rampant decay all the way through those teeth, decay ring barking the root surface all the way around to the point where the crown just amputates completely. And again, you can appreciate the um, the debris accumulation of um, of old dead skin cells um, on the tongue there, and in a very very dry mouth. So this is the sort of patient uh, that we really can't get on top of. You can't maintain his dentition in the context of the severe dryness that he um, would experience. Fortunately for him, we identified that he would likely be a problem. And so we took the precaution of removing all of his back teeth, which were in the area of the high dose radiation. That we was prior to treatment. That was prior to treatment, yes. Yeah. So we anticipated that he would have problems. We didn't expect the remaining teeth would uh, fall apart as quickly as they did. But luckily, um, they were out of the radiation field and they went on to be extracted as normal with no risk of complications. So that, that was a good outcome in the end for him and he ended up just having to wear dentures. My understanding is it's always worth stopping smoking, that if we stop smoking, even before treatment, during treatment, after treatment, we it, it's good, it gives us a better chance of survival and quality of life. That's the right message, isn't it? Absolutely. And not only that, um, oral cancers are sometimes characterised by recurrences in the mouth. So if you continue the habits of cause the oral cancer in the first place and you get a recurrence in the same general vicinity, your treatment options are much more limited. So there's only so much radiation you can have, there's only so much tolerance your tissues can cope with before things really start to break down and we have devastating long-term side effects. So your best chance is you first go at it um, and then you need to do everything you can to try and reduce your risk from then on as much as possible. Let me ask you about alcohol because, um, uh, you know, I feel like as a general population, completely separate from cancer, many Australians struggle to accept the guidelines on alcohol because they just seem so low for yeah. both men and women. Uh, for patients who've actually had a, a cancer which has uh, alcohol has contributed to causation, What's your advice? What if you if it was you or your mum or brother? What would you advise? Yeah, I'd look, I'd be doing everything I could to eliminate the risk factors as far as possible. Um, many of the patients we see these classic head and neck patients uh, are also heavy smokers, and this combination of smoking and alcohol consumption it's not just an additive effect; it's a multiplicative effect. So, if you can at least cut one out, you've reduced your chance significantly. If you can then just moderate your intake as much as possible, you're giving yourself the best chance of avoiding a second cancer. And then, your treatment options, as I say, are much, much more limited. 